it's, I think it started up because I was in sales and I was just tired of it. I was tired of having five managers that could just ruin my day at any given time. <laughs> you know what I mean? Five different people. I mean, everybody has one manager, but five managers? I, I think I'm done working for somebody else. I don't want to do it anymore, so I quit. Um, I've been running this little business for about a year and a half now. My brother told me that I shouldn't. He's a psychiatrist or whatever. He is, right? He told me I shouldn't do what I love for a job, but maybe to each their own, really. Maybe to each their own, because I haven't regretted it ever since the day I started. This house is a big blended family. We're, we're mine and hers, and neither one of ours, but both of ours. You know what it is, don't you, Reagan? The finest sandpaper of all. It's Reagan, dude. It's Reagan. I just take Reagan and rub him all over this table. Oh, I think that's good. And you know what? It brings awesome ideas because they have great imaginations. And if you listen to them, Listen to the kids. That's the best way to teach them. This tree's pretty awesome. Yeah. You know I what? Like this is an alligator juniper tree, and really, it's my favorite wood in the world. And when I sand it here in a little bit, you'll see why it's my favorite wood. It is beautiful on the is inside. Is it gonna turn like a cherry color? Uh, it actually turns like an orange color. And when you put the lacquer on it, it's quite orange, but uh, I love it. It's a gorgeous, gorgeous wood. Oh, this is where people dump off old furniture so we can um, turn it into something cool. This is some stuff that was left over from a house fire and I'm going to take it and turn it into something cool one day. This stuff back over here. This stuff is, uh, what, literally leftover firewood from camping. And I've already taken it and turned it into bar stools and all kinds of cool stuff. If you pull the bark off of this thing, you'll find scorpions and whatever. There's ash. This is a nice pine beam that I want to put in somebody's shop one day. Maybe mine. That'd be cool. But <laughs> When doing an all rustic design in a home, you can do your framing and then cap your framing with the outsides of the logs and actually use a log as your beam instead of a beam. It's all wood. It's just somebody didn't mill the crap out of that one and make it unrecognizable as a tree. That's it's awesome. still recognizable as a tree, so you use that as a beam and it gives you so much more character. I mean, why, I don't know, in my mind, why would somebody chop the heck out of that? You know why? Money. They can get three beams out of that tree if they chop it into three beams. But I like it gorgeous just like that. This tree right here was a tree in somebody's backyard that grew up and got too big and they decided to cut it out and it's considered urban ash because urban it grew up in the city right but it's just full of great uniquities that not every piece has like you can see right here that black spot right there there's a nail in there somewhere in that wood within a couple of inches there's a nail in there because somebody was building a tree house and they had to put a nail every 15 inches so they could climb up it, right? <laughs> but I, we can do anything. I, you, you know, you can take a tree out of your yard, turn it into something cool for your house, a mantle, a table, a whatever, and it's your tree. I guess I, guess I kind of watched that growing up. They did that with my shamal ash tree, same exact kind of tree. When I was a kid, we built a tree house and this big shamal ash tree, me and my dad. And when the tree had to come out so we could add on to the house, they took that tree and they built a big, beautiful mantle out of it. And that tree was dear to my heart. That tree is probably that stupid ash tree that I used to yodel in the top of when I was an annoying next door neighbor to the other kids. That tree probably started it all, really. Tell well, the truth. I'm not crying. I'm not. <laughs> Time for a safety meeting. Come on. I love what you do with that table, Nicky. That little... Oh, that picture? I don't know why. It's, I mean, a, a heavy, burning passion for rocks and wood. I'm a weirdo. I get it, whatever. But I, 
I'll see a tree and I'll talk to it. <laughs> I'll tell you what, I could flatten off one side and I could flatten off another side, but you know what I couldn't do? Is make that any better than nature herself made it. You can't. I don't know, I, I love wood. <laughs> I love it. I love it. And it's just me, I don't know. Yeah, but up there in the White Mountains, we do it a little different. We leave it a little more bark on or um, rustic on because it's more mountainous. The area is more mountainous and the furniture in a lot of those cabins up there is more mountainous. And uh, so yeah, long time ago, I learned how to do that. And that this is, hmm. That's where my heart is really, is that somewhere in a tree. Maybe I was a tree in a past life or in the next life or something. I don't know, but I love them. I love them.